Hi everybody, uh, back in the shop today. Um, my name is Luther from Luther's Woodworking. We are going to be doing a picket fence today, a patriotic picket fence today. Uh, my last couple videos I did uh, some patriotic items, uh, American Red, White and Blue Cross, and I did some carving of some stars. We're going to stick with the same theme and uh, do a patriotic uh, picket fence. Um, this is the fence that we're going to do. Um, this one obviously is not the patriotic one, it's just a plain pine, but it's got the three boards that make up the fence and then it's got these backing boards that hold it all together. Um, very easy project to do. Uh, like I said, we're going to make one just like it, but it's going to be a patriotic with red, white, and blue and some stars on it. So we're going to get started here. I'm going to step you through all the process of doing this fence. Now the first thing you're going to need to do this fence is you're going to need two of these uh, 1 by 4 by 8 pine boards. That's all you need to make. That's all you need to make this fence is two of these boards uh, with very little left over. Um, they're 1 by 4s by 8 pine. Um, and when you pick out your pine, I try to get the straightest ones, not very many knots and things like that but it's just a picket fence so I mean you can you can have something that has a little imperfections in it so what we're going to do on this fence each of these boards are 48 inches long and then the back boards are 19 inches long we're going to head over to the chop saw and we're going to cut all the boards for that and then also you have to put on your Put on the peaks on each end of the boards. We're going to do that over at the chop saw. So we're going to head over there, get these cut up, and then we'll be back over here on the bench. All right, um, at the chop saw here, I already got my uh, stop here set at 48 inches from my blade here. And we're going to go ahead and cut three of these at 48 inches. And then we need, I said we need two of them at 19 inches. So I'm going to move my stop here. And I have a board here that's, not, this is 19 inches long here, so I'm just going to use that to set up my saw here at 19 inches. And now we can cut two of them at 19. So you got your two at 19. Uh, we won't need to do anything with them. Now the three boards that we did cut, we need to put uh, the 45 degree angle peak on it. So we'll take this stop off. And also you want to set your uh, chop saw to 45, 45 degree angle. And then on each one of your boards, because we're going to put a, a peak on here, what I do is just, you can measure if you like, but I just kind of mark the center here, kind of whatever I think the center is on these boards. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, just kind of mark the center. And then I'm going to take and lay my board out here, and I'm just going to run my blade. My blades run right up to that mark right there and I'm going to do a 45 degree cut and then all you do there is just turn your board over 
and line your blade up with the end of that cut. And there you have your, your 45 degree angle on your picket fence. And we're going to do that to the other two. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just flip it over. And the same, same thing for the last one. Now, if you don't have a chop saw, you could do this with a, a, um, a jigsaw or a handsaw. Alright, so you have your, you got your three boards, three pickets on the top up here. We're going to head over back over to the workbench and get these boards all sanded up and ready to assemble. Okay, um, because we're going to do uh, a star union on this flag, it's going to be on the first two boards uh, of the flag of this fence. I'm going to, what I like to do is cut a little um, line across these first two. That way when I stain these two blue, the stain doesn't bleed over to this other bottom because this board's going to be red and this board's going to be white but the top half is going to be blue and that's where we're going to engrave the stars so whatever side you want to be the front of your fence you lay down on your saw and then I got my fence set at 10 inches from the blade including the, the thickness of the blade it's 10 inches and so and then what I do or actually it's not I'm sorry it's not 10 inches it's 18 inches from the uh, fence to the blade. And what I do is take my board fence, put it up against my fence here, and you, when you use your fence, you, you, you don't want to use your fence and your miter jig at the same time, miter slide. So line these up to the fence, you know you got it 18 inches, then take and move your fence out of the way because you don't want that fence when you're using this uh, miter slide. Then all we're going to do is just hold your boards like this here and then we're going to run that across that blade and create that, that union separation on the top of that fence. Okay, so we have the union separation on that fence. This part of it is going to be staying blue. This one's going to be red. This one's going to be white. But what I like, what I like about making this cut is you don't have to worry about um, the stain bleeding over into this other part. Plus, it looks pretty nice. So we're going to head over to the bench sand all these parts up really nice and we can get the stain in these okay this is one of the steps you don't have to do uh i like to sand these fences before i uh stain them and assemble them because lumber when it comes it's real sharp on the edges you can get slivers and also lumber comes with uh sometimes it has a stamp on it like right here it's got a it's got a stamp on it so you want to sand all that off and uh, clean up the lumber really nice, round up, round the edges, soften up all the edges of the fence. So we're going to sand this, and what I got is an 80 grit sandpaper on my uh, palm sander here. Um, it just leaves a nice texture, and 80 grit, you don't have to work as hard to get all the imperfections out of the wood. So we'll get all this sanded up here before we uh, get to the stain. <laughs>
it up. Now, all the edges are nice and uh, kind of smooth. We're not talking about furniture here, so you don't need it glassy smooth. Um, it's just a picket fence. But it just, that 80 grit sandpaper it just gives it a nice texture and, and finishes it off really nice. So the next thing we're going to want to do is do some staining because you don't want to you don't want to put your fence together and then try to stain it because it's going to be a pain in the butt to try to stain everything. So I like to just lay my fence out just the way it would be. And then what we're going to do is stain the first two parts here blue, the top half of this from this cut line up is blue. This one's going to be red. This one's going to be white, or you could leave it natural and just burn it. And this one's going to be red again. And here's the two backboards, which uh, you don't need to put anything on them. So we're going to stain these. And what I do, I'm just using a Minwax navy blue stain here. Um, it's mixed up at, you can get it at Lowe's or probably any store that sells paint. And you're just going to paint this top. And, and like I said, having that cut mark there makes it a lot easier not getting no blue over on this bottom piece. So I'm going to get all these stained up we're going to be back when everything's all stained up like i said this part's going to be blue this is going to be red white and red no stain on the back pieces when i get this all stained we will be back to assemble this fence okay so we got all the stain on the pieces of the fence it's all dry um what i want to mention a couple things i didn't mention in the video earlier when you're cutting your little groove here for the union separation it's only about 3 16 of an inch deep it's only got to be scored across a little bit um, doesn't have to be real deep so just set your uh, table saw to about 3 16 no more to an eighth inch you just want to make that separation line there and then also on the stain i use stain because it shows the grain and the wood through um, better than paint paint probably would cover it up but you could use paint to paint these fences you don't need to use stain and then also sanding these fences um, we're not making furniture here so it, it doesn't have to be totally glassy smooth I use six, uh, 80 grit sandpaper so I just like to round off the edges so you're not getting no slivers and it just gives it a, a real nice look so it doesn't have to be totally smooth I use 80 grit sandpaper on it so I got all everything stained here and laid out now during the staining process, you're probably going to get some stain on the back pieces of your fence here. Um, what I like to do is take my sander and sand it. It'll come off really nice off the back of your fence. I don't like to leave that on there. It just looks a lot nicer if the, all, any paint or stain that you got on the back is off once it's together. So what, what I'm going to do is just tip these over and we'll uh, sand the backs. You'll see it comes off really easy. And I'm just using the same... Uh, 60 grit sandpaper to get that off.
All right, um, once you get your paint all sanded off the back of your boards here, just kind of clean them up a little bit, get the sawdust out of here. Tip them back over. Um, one thing that is important is the next step we're going to be putting these uh, back braces. We're going to be putting these back braces on the, on the fence. But, the, but what's important is you got to make sure the blue section is on the left side of your fence. These two top areas are going to be blue. So when you lay your fence out, and you can see right here, I have a I have a board here in my vise here that gives me a nice straight edge here because you want your fence level when you put it together. But the main thing is you want your two blue pieces on the top right here, then the red right here. So be, and then when you flip them over to put your backs on, you just flip them over like that. And, that, and then when you got your back pieces on, when you pick it up, these two blue pieces are going to be on your left side. So, these back braces, the bottom one, measure up seven inches from the bottom and put a mark. And that's going to be this edge of your board lines up with the um, mark. Now here, I want to, I, I almost forgot, the spacing, the spacing in this fence is exactly the same on all my fences. So when you flip them over, you got one right here. I made these spacer blocks, they're three and a half inches wide. I made four of them. So you're gonna put one fence piece here, put a spacer block there, put a spacer block there, and then you're gonna take your other fence piece and bring that up to them blocks. And then you're gonna take another block and put it right here. And then you're gonna do the same thing over here. Now, when you put your fence together, you got the exact spacing um, on every fence that you make. So, we measured up seven inches from the bottom, made a mark. You're going to take your other board for the back and line them up on the marks. Now, this board here is a little longer than the width of the fence. Just even it up on both sides the best you can, tie it up. And then right on your marks. And what I like to do, because I use these inch and a quarter uh, multi-purpose screws for the fence, I like to pre-drill my holes instead of just running the screw in because sometimes it, it's going to want to split your board. And my screw pattern is I'll put one screw there, one right here, and one right here. Kind of a triangle pattern. And I'll do that to each uh, section right here. Then I'll come over here and I'll put a screw pattern like that in there. So what I'll do is I'll just drill my first pilot hole. And you don't have to drill all the way through both pieces, just through this one. Then come over here. And then you can put your screw in just to hold that piece. Now you got that held in place, you can finish drilling your pilot holes. Then you can just finish putting your screws in. And you'll notice too, there's absolutely no, I'm not using any glue to put this fence together. So if you happen to make a mistake, you can always take it apart and adjust things or 
uh, a year from now, let's say you need to repaint something or fix a piece of this fence, you can just take it apart. There's no glue in this fence. So on the top, we'll go over to the top one now. You put the top one on. You want to make a mark 13 inches. 13 inches from the top. Just go off the just go off the peak up here. 13 inches. Make a mark. And you're going to do the same thing. Now, sometimes these boards are going to want to spread apart. You want to keep them up against your spaces because you want the fence to be the same space. So sometimes you can just take a take a little clamp like this. Just kind of give it a little tight there so it holds all together. Line your board up with the marks. Make sure your spaces on each side is pretty close. And just do the same thing. Draw one there. Just put two in just to hold it in place. There, now you got it held in place. You can just finish drilling your pilot holes. And you'll notice I use three screws. Um, probably two would hold it. I, I just use three screws. All right, so you got your back pieces on. Take your clamp off here. And then just pick your fence up. Just pop these spacer blocks out. And voila. You have a patriotic fence. You just got a couple more things to do. Clean the, the sawdust off here a little bit. Okay, so if you do happen to get any marks on your fence, you can always take a, a brush and touch up some of your stain or your paint. Other than that, it looks, actually looks pretty nice. The next thing you're gonna wanna do, we're gonna put stars on these in the union up here. So I have these templates, these star templates, and I'll put a link below in my description of where I get these star templates. You can get them all different sizes, very small and real huge ones. Um, this actual template, I use the larger stars. Let me see, these stars are about, I want to say, about an inch and three quarter across. So they're fairly big stars. And you always want to make sure the point of the star is facing up on your fence. And when you go to lay your pattern out, just use your, your cut mark here that you cut as a guide. And then here you got your one, two, three, four stars. Here you got four stars right here all the way on the board. You can move it over a little bit and you're going to end up with four stars that are completely on and five stars that are partially on, on each side. So it's about the same. Uh, you can lay it out any way you want, but that's the way I found where it looks about the best. So once you got that laid out like that on there, so the next thing all you got to do is trace 
trace your stars out. And I just use a pencil, go in here and trace these stars out. Um, it's not that hard. You don't have to be too fancy with it. All these pencil marks are going to come off. You won't see them. Just make sure your stencil doesn't move as you do this. Okay, I think we got everything traced. Once you get all your stuff. Okay, so once you got your stars traced out on your your fence section here, uh, we're going to use a Dremel tool to uh, etch out all these uh, stars. Now, if you're not familiar with using a Dremel, I would suggest maybe practicing on a piece of scrap wood so you don't mess up your project. Um, the two bits that I use for dremeling out stars are actually this 106 bit right here, and you should be able to see it. Hopefully you can see that uh, 106 is a real small bit. Um, and then there's also a uh, 107 bit that I use to uh, do the inside of the stars once I outline. Because I use the 106 to outline the stars. And then I use this 107 to take everything off on the inside of the star. It just works a lot nicer. So we're going to get started here, and I'm going to uh, do the outline of this one star, and then I'll switch bits and show you um, the 107 taken off the inside.
Okay, one one thing that's nice about using the 106 bit for outlining is I can get a real sharp point on my stars with the smaller bit. And now we're just going to switch. We'll just switch these bits here. And I'll use the 107 to take off the inside of the star. Okay, so we have the first star here cleaned out here. Now, <clears throat> like I said, the, the smaller bit you can get some sharper points on your your star, and then the the larger bit it makes it a lot easier to take out uh, more of the inside quicker. And um, one thing you, you don't want to really dig in a lot; you're only taking off the the blue. You're not really gouging into the star taking out. You're just scraping the top to get the blue off. I'm not going to make you sit through the whole process of me engraving these stars. I got videos out there on my channel showing you how I do my stars. Um, I'm going to dremel out all these stars and then we'll be back to uh, finish up this flag. Okay, we are done with our stars. And like I said, if you have not used the Dremel before, make sure you practice on something that, so you don't mess up your project. Uh, the last step, we're going to take a propane torch here, and we are going to burn the, a little bit on the stars and on the wood that we did not put any stain or anything on. So this is how we're going to do that. Okay, I'm just gonna take the torch. I'm gonna burn these stars just a little bit. Kind of gets the fuzzies off them and kind of darkens them up just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is burn the wood here, and then we're gonna turn it over and 
burn all this back right here. It kind of gives it the rustic look. You don't want it real dark, you just want to just go over it just a little bit. Just a little short time just to give it a little, little uh, rustic look. Not real long, it'll burn the fuzzies off. And then on this board here, you just want to, just enough to bring that grain out. Okay, so there you have it. There is, well, I see one more spot here. You don't want to miss any spots.
Okay, so there is your flag or your picket fence. I keep on, I keep on wanting to say flag. It's a, actually a picket fence. Um, it is complete. Um, very easy project to do. Um, no glue, no clamps. Uh, what I would suggest is, is to put an um, a outdoor sealer on it if you're going to set this outside. Um, so if you uh, like this video, what I want you to do is hit subscribe. Ring, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and uh, hit that uh, notification bell because I do have a lot more videos coming out. Um, so we will see you on my next video.